guys is the beautiful ladies of Liberated Muse. Uh, their CD is called Awakening. They had that out a few months, a few years ago, but it's still playing on a lot of people's radio. So I just want to thank you and welcome you all ladies to Conversations with Crystal. Hi. 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 <laughs> thank you for having us. <laughs> yes, thank you for being here. So I want to first start out with each one of you all uh, introducing yourselves. Um, we can start with um, Coley. Yes, yes. Hi, how, how's everybody? I'm Coley Aziza, and um, I am part of Liberated Muse. I'm a singer, songwriter, um, educator, author, and um, I'm just glad to be here with you all. Glad to, and I'm glad to really, really have a wonderful group of sister artists that I work with and collaborate with, it is really a blessing. Thank you. Ms. Khadija? Hi, everybody. My name is Khadija Ali Coleman. I'm the- Dr. Khadija Ali Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Khadija Ali Coleman. I, I'm the founder and creative director of Liberated Muse, and I'm a um, singer, songwriter, a playwright, um, do a lot of stuff, and happy to be here. Thank you for having us today. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Lynn? Hello, everyone. Um, I am Lynn Halstead. I have uh, been with Liberated Muse for a long time now. Mm -hmm. um, I do poetry and spoken word. Um, this is my creative outlet, outlet and um, I just enjoy opportunities to perform with my beautiful sister. Amen. Not last, but last but not least, please introduce yourself. <laughs> Hello, I'm Anonymous Grooves, a singer, songwriter, researcher, uh -oh. wellness advocate, and I'm very blessed to be part of this sisterhood of Liberated Muse. And again, thank you. It's wonderful just to get out there and, and connect with other people. Absolutely, absolutely. So as I wanted to first start off, um, Liberated Muse, can you tell us exactly how Liberated Muse uh, got started? So Liberated Muse started in 2008 as an online community, um, a digital community akin to maybe MySpace where members could join, they had a profile where they could add music, could blog. Um, so it was really an opportunity for me to start an online kind of artist community as I was getting back into my artist groove. I was, I was at the time living in Baltimore and I knew I was transitioning back to the Washington DC area where I had um, really done a lot of things artistically years before I had my daughter, who at the time was four years old. And wow. <laughs> and so um, created the community, um, partnered with a, a friend of mine, and he and I um, started to produce the Capital Hip Hop Soul Fest. And we did that for three summers until I really, I realized that I was kind of getting away from what the, the purpose of Liberated Muse, the brand was, which was really to be a space where I could become creative, interact with artists. And so around 2009, started producing um, plays that I had written. And um, the first play was a play called Running Amok. And okay. it's a musical. And so we, I ran, I, it debuted in the Capitol Fringe Festival in DC in 2009, um, 2010, excuse me. I did some revisions to it after I looked at that as workshopping it. And then in 2011 was when um, I did a, another season of it. We toured the play. Coley came on board for that. For, for the first run, Lynn and, and, and Anonymous were part of the cast. The second run, um, Lynn was still with us. Coley came in in the um, main character role. And then from there, it just seemed like <laughs> we were doing plays like every month. Um, and so theater started to be, not every month, but every year, in, in place, theater started to be the, 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 at the forefront of what it is that we did. So it moved from this online community to now this performance troupe and really this incubator of being able to produce um, work that I had written. Um, and also we were publishing books. I was publishing the work of people who had been part of this digital community. So we currently have about um, three volumes. 
Liberated Muse anthology series. They're two um, volumes that it's a tangible book. The third mm -hmm. volume is, is free and it's a digital collection that's on our website. And in addition <laughs> to plays <laughs> and books, we have the CD that you mentioned. Yes. And we also have a CD um, that we did that was a soundtrack of one of the productions <laughs> called when we, were, when we Were Goddesses, which debuted at Artscape Festival in Baltimore in 2017. And it, it has songs um, that we, the, we wrote, um, Angie Anon Anonymous mm -hmm. wrote a couple of songs on it, mm -hmm. as well as songs that the characters performed. Lynn yeah. is prominent in the, in the CD because she kind of does the transitions um, between each song. She was the main okay. character in the play, mm -hmm. kind of like, not the narrator, because she had a character, but um, the, the lead character that kind of carried the story. And so she, so she's featured in that CD. So that's kind of like a synopsis of what we've done. We've been able to really perform in some wonderful um, venues, doing everything from performing plays to singing, um, and to also do um, spoken word. Right, right. So I know that I've had the pleasure of seeing you all uh, perform in different venues, uh, like the Kennedy Center, uh, Millennium Stage. Uh, I've also seen you all, uh, you even went over to the Anacostia area, and I believe I had a chance to see you perform there as well, uh, when you all were just, it was, it was more, uh, it looked like it was more of a Coley thing, but um, I definitely saw you out there promoting, you know, your stuff as well. Um, that was, I think, was it last year? Maybe year before last? One summer. It was like doing the summer months over in Anacostia um, area in the new art center. Um, that was Quams in August. Quams in August? Yes, that yeah, was that in August. August. Yeah, I think you might have just come on the night that Khadija got the water, which is a band that I performed with too. Okay. okay. Yeah, that was a whole, that, I mean, Khadija, um, Khadija had artists come in, she curated that. Um, right. And, speakers, workshops. I mean, Quantum all this was a big event. Yeah. Absolutely. I would say it was wonderful. It definitely was nice. And the uh, the ambiance was very nice and inviting. So I was glad I was able to um, take a part of that. Uh, so can, can we just thank you for that? Can we just thank you? Because you have, you have been, I forgot. I, that was our anniversary <laughs> event and I forgot. That was a freaking festival. I was like, in the concert, when we were there. But I just, I, I want to thank you so much for your continued support of our work. You show up. It's, Whenever I see your face, I just smile and just, I'm so thankful and grateful. And I know you're Lynn's friend, but you're our friend too. And we really are Absolutely. thankful. Well, thank you. Thank you. I yeah. definitely, I definitely, definitely believe in get you guys. And so that kind of lead me to my other question, which is Liberated Muse. What is your mission in, um, um, far as in the, the group? What is it that you want to what is it that you want to share with the people? In other words, we are here for, and you can take that, um, maybe um, Anonymous, you want to take that? Liberated Muse is here for? Um, edu edutainment, to educate and entertain, as well as a lot of different things. We love to tell a story, um, something that people never know, or they walk away saying, oh, that was really interesting. So that's a big premise. Things that bring to light the plight of African Americans, mm. women. Yeah. Um, you guys can chime in at any time, but <laughs> um, that's, that's a big part of it. Sure, sure. Uh, how about you, Lynn? What's your perspective of what you all do? Um, it, it's along the same lines. Actually, the best person to, to answer this question would be Khadija since she has found it. But when I think about the purpose and why we're here with Liberated Muse, it's really that empowerment factor. Yeah. Um, it's about that education. It is about bringing to life the stories of African-American women in a diaspora, parts of the story that never has been shared before or never been truly understood before. Mm -hmm. And kind of giving a different perspective of the path that we we have been on and that we're currently on. Yeah. So yeah. that Khadija. <laughs> that, like that that's in a nutshell. Really, um, it's about sharing stories of the, the the diaspora. It is a particular focus on women. Um, you know, mm -hmm. we're women, um, and a mm -hmm. lot of the stories, particularly when we talk about people using their social platform, or their their platform for social justice, rarely um, do you see um, 
the work that women have done at the forefront and mm -hmm. particularly women who are, I, I think, are representative of who we are, are multidimensional, not just artists. You know, all of us have something else that we excel in outside of the arts. In addition to the arts, I mm -hmm. think um, it kind of minimizes the power of people when you only focus on one aspect. And it's really difficult for a lot of people to look at at folks as their multidimensional selves. A lot of people, and particularly if that's not what they do, then it's either um, problematic for them or mm -hmm. it's up something for them to recognize the, the, the limitless possibilities that another person can be. And I really take pleasure in sharing the stories of folks that you may have known them as a singer, mm -hmm. you may have known them at this, as this, but they also did this. And it was mm -hmm. significant to how we live now. And mm -hmm. um, so it's an, an opportunity to not only inform, but I look at it as, as showing reverence. I'm very, um, connected to storytelling because I look at storytelling as being a part of ritual, being mm -hmm. a very important part of um, how we um, keep our culture alive and, and, and keep the memory of who we are as a people. It's really significant for us to be um, aware of people as their whole selves, right. as much as we know. And a lot of times we romanticize um, aspects of our culture and, and not really aware of the context in which people existed mm -hmm. and I think it's very important and so when Angie says edutainment I really <laughs> I'm a teacher that's what I do that's what right. I've always done and the arts have been able to be a vehicle in which to teach and so um, I think things should be entertaining but I also think that there should be some learning component so I'm not someone <laughs> I'm probably not the best person um, for people if just looking to do something artsy I right. really am it, I really have a connection to doing things that also are about something where it's people use the word uplift mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, it's not because we t we've talked about this that I'm probably the most depressing <laughs> out of the four of us so I'm really not <laughs> necessarily going to tell you something uplifting or share something uplifted I'm really about um truth um yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. but you know so. yeah because that actually leads me to my question of you know i know some of the pieces that you have done um one of them being tony morrison and how important that was for you guys to actually get that story out from your review and so you know if you want to elaborate on that i know that's that's one tony uh, morrison the one that you did for black history over at the library um, where you basically wanted to showcase neighborhoods and as well as legacy. Um, so I do see your, your uh, body of work as it's educational, it's historic, um, it is empowering to women as well as uplifting of men. Uh, I think that, you know, some of your pieces definitely speak to the men population and you basically are saying that, hey, we are women, but we love our men at the same time. So, like I said, so one of the pieces that I wanted to talk about was the Toni Morrison piece. Can you elaborate on um, what, what that piece, what the, explain that piece to, to the uh, community? You're talking about our Toni Morrison show? Yeah, you, you did a, uh, was it, um, it was it an actual show? I believe that it was, or was it just a piece? So, <laughs> okay. you probably like, woman, I just showed up and y'all talking about Toni Morrison. So, so this is how, in my head, so, <laughs> so we, so that, when you came to the library, that was the opening for an exhibit that I did for the Prince George's African American Museum. Okay. Um, it was a historical exhibit. But when, when all of us were performing that part, that was uh, an excerpt from a show that we performed at the Kennedy Center okay. and that we had been touring at different libraries. So the exhibit itself that I did with the museum was inspired by Toni Morrison's work, Song of Solomon, her book, Song of Solomon, in terms of looking at the ways that the reasons why... Um, some Maryland families, Black families, had migrated to Prince George's County. Um, and also, when talking about that, what were some of the things that they encountered when they got here, okay? Right. Um, the, the performance piece of it, talking about Toni Morrison, the, th the songs that were inspired. I think, to um, Coley, did you want to talk about that show that we toured, the Toni Morrison show? No, no, I was telling my family to 
Just, I'm just trying to, to pass pass the yeah. oh, I'm sorry. The I, I thought you saw me go like that. I was just like No. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to share just just about the, the show, the Toni Morrison show, her significance to us, why it was so important for us to um to even do something to honor oh, her. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, we actually it's interesting because we were going to do a piece about Toni Morrison. What was it in like 2014? It was 2014. It was right before my mother passed. Because we were like, let's give her what is, what is that saying? Let's give her her roses or let's give her here. her while she's here instead. And and then and and then we is it because I think Khadija's mom passed away, and then other things happened. We just got distracted, and but then other things other things were written. Other shows we had other shows, but, but other people kept kept passing away that's because after right. that because we did that but then um, Maya Angelou died, uh -huh. Ruby died. Yeah. so then yeah. that's when we started I just we started right. focusing right. on the tribute shows okay right. and so what um what I what Khadija did so beautifully was to connect pieces from Toni Morrison's books with different songs and okay. um and so it's sort of uh, um just it's just a it's almost like a quilt and that's why it's so wonderful because she we also did quilting at the library and it's mm -hmm. different events we had folks take pictures of Toni Morrison and just create their own patch of a quilt and we put it up but it is it's like she made a quilt with, with the stories um the pieces from the stories and the songs and she actually invited guest artists. So you were there, <laughs> Crystal, right? And um, you got to see um, Kimberly Collins. She did a piece based on Song of Solomon, if I'm not mistaken. Well, yeah. she it was several, several pieces. multiple pieces. pieces. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then two uh -oh. of our other the guest artists actually read pieces. Um, Olu Butterfly did a beautiful rendering um, of of one of the um, passages from Toni Morrison's uh, work. So it was just stunning to me. I mean, I, I mean, I was in it and I practiced, but to actually see everything come together, it was, a, I think, a wonderful tribute to, to um, our ancestor, Toni Morrison. I think she would have been pleased. Amen. Now, yeah, I, I, I will add, if you guys don't mind, for the viewers, um, it was an absolutely beautiful show. Mm -hmm. And if you would like to see it, you can actually um, YouTube it. Um, just put in Kennedy Center, Liberated Muse, Toni Morrison. They actually streamed the entire performance. Um, it is some beautiful music, some beautiful ex excerpts from her her book. And as Coley has already expressed, it's just kind of streamed together in a beautiful quilt, just honoring our ancestor. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. I was going to get to it as well. So, uh, ladies, I know that the, um, the, the, the way the world is going right now, some of your performances may have been, have to be rescheduled, but do you have any upcoming performances, uh, maybe starting in June when we out of this, <laughs> <laughs> when we out of this, uh, that you want to share with the, with the audiences, you know, coming up now, nothing. We, okay. Everything has been canceled as far as I know. Um, and so I haven't, I, you know, even the exhibit that you were talking about, that was supposed to yeah. be opened at the museum that sponsored it. And that they had to delay it as yeah. well. I don't even know if they're, when they're going to reopen the museum, but um, festival, this festival season, season is the summer and a lot of places have canceled mm -hmm. or put holds on gigs. So I don't anticipate us really having much of a summer performance mm. schedule fingers crossed for oh, things yeah. in the fall or the winter okay okay and so Kibisi, tell them our website so that they can follow us for well, we're not ending. miss lynn we're not ending so <laughs> <laughs> don't, be trying to, don't be trying to rule my show <laughs> i got you i got you <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to uh, talk to um, to each one of you in an individual way, and um, you know, I know that you all definitely have uh, inputted your own. Um, if you don't mind um, giving your individual talent that you bring to the group, um, if you don't mind, Lynn, we can start with you. What is your role in Liberated Muse? So first, let me make it perfectly clear. 
I do not sing. Uh, <laughs> um, I've, I've acted in multiple plays and I've also done spoken word. Um, and, and why I always, I always make sure I, I make it clear that I am not a singer. I do do backup vocals, so I'm not okay. horrible. I'm just nowhere yes. near if you, you've heard my ladies sing. So, Absolutely. Um, so I do backup vocals, I do spoken word, and I um, also act and perform. Okay, well, you want to give us a little snippet of your spoken word? So actually, one of my favorite pieces is not an original piece, but it has literally become a liberated muse piece because we've um, performed it multiple times and has been asked to perform it multiple times. And we also incorporate it into one of the original songs that's on our um, Awakening CD. Okay. Um, and that is Phenomenal Woman. Okay. Um, by Maya Angelou, who is one of my ultimate favorite artists and just... The, the fact that I will never get to meet her in person um, it, it's one of those things that is disheartening for me. But I'm not going to do the whole poem. I'll just do the first verse. Um, and again, it is on our Awakening CD, integrated yes, into an original song for anybody who wants to hear the full thing. But it's, pretty women wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say, it's in the reach of my arms. It's in the span of my hips. It's in the glide of my steps. The curl of my lips. I'm a woman. Phenomenally. Yeah, Phenomenal you are. woman. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Miss Lynn. All right, that was very. You put some stain on that. Dang. I can't use my whole body. I can't yeah. use my face. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, that was like yes. <laughs> All right, um, how about you, Miss Anonymous? You want to share your role in the group and uh, maybe give us a snippet of what you do? Scared. Scared. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am a singer songwriter. I'm kind of the opposite of uh -oh. I'm like a background actor <laughs> or okay. like a prop more <laughs> say. I'm, I do the singing, but I you know <laughs> I like I love to act and I admire people that can, but Khadija knows so I'm like, okay, I do the little teeny scene. So <laughs> uh <-huh. Okay. laughs> I find my joy in that. <laughs> okay. I'm so, gonna do um, just a snippet from a song. It's a staple that we do when we perform one that I wrote called Us. And it's, I'm just going to do a snippet of it. Okay. And it's just basically talking about us as Black people and what we've gone through. When I think about all the great things that we've done, it makes me feel like we are. Oh. We were once considered livestock, now the Whole world rocks what we got, from slavery to free, from marching to liberty. And then I think about the struggle, the constant shuffle, the subprime loans and broken homes, economy pushed, a lion bush, spread of AIDS and the slavery trade. And I'm not. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Um... We'll let Miss Miss Khadija go now, cause uh, we know that Miss Cody can really blow, and we're gonna let her lead us out of here. <laughs> so Miss Khadija, we know that you're the founder of the group and all, and you are do you're definitely more of the um, the writer as well. But go ahead and share a little bit more if you want of what you do for the group. I do. A <laughs> I sing. I act. I perform um spoken word um i guess i'm just gonna do we women because i don't have anything okay. Okay. we women struggling to shrink our girth into sizes of three and four until our blossoming bodies become to be no more we women of stature and majestic size seek to become model citizens in our society's stiff eyes and in anorexic spoutings magazines clamor day to day to conform our sense of self and spirituality into a slimmer and more concise way see mm -hmm. we have to believe that as our blooming bodies 
shrink. Our self-esteem will gradually grow. Mm -hmm. But is this new psychology that's being fostered one that only magazine editors and ad execs know? Will our hearts and intelligence factor suddenly increase or will we as women be recognized as equals rightly at least? Mm -hmm. I'll stop there. Wow, thank you, thank you. That was powerful, that was powerful. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, Miss Coley, you're going to sing. Yeah, we know you're singing. I know you're a singer, but let the audience know exactly what you do and um, what role you play. And if you don't mind, give us a little snippet of what you do. Okay, well, I, um, I act, and actually, that's how I really started um, the Liberated Muse. <laughs> <laughs> it's really? a role, which I love. And then, um, and then I, um, I'm a vocalist, and I also write songs. Um, I wanted to, because my memory is really bad, and so I don't have any um, lyrics in front of me, so I mean, I, I wanted to do this song because I think it kind of sums up. It's from Toni Morrison's, um, from Song of Solomon, and Khadija wrote this song, and I really, really love this song. I don't remember all the words to the, it's right, they're not at the top of my head right now, but the hook basically repeats and says, I have sung all the songs. And I believe that really it speaks to the body of work that Liberated Muse does do. And mm -hmm. that, you know, Khadija has written about all these women that have sung all these songs. And so it goes like this. Um, I have sung all the songs. I have sung all the songs. There are, I have sung all the songs. I have sung all the songs. I love that song. I think oh, it is. thank you. Thank you for sharing with the audience. So, ladies, I want to thank you once again for being here. Um, you want to tell us exactly where people, I, I know personally myself that you can be uh, found on Facebook at Liberated Muse. So those who are tuning in, uh, please check out their um, website on um, their uh, Facebook page and like it, uh, spread it to your family and friends and uh, all abroad. But um, give us your other platforms that we can find you on. Um, we're on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. Instagram um, at Liberated Muse? Mm-hmm. Everything okay. is Liberated Muse, except for on Facebook, it's Liberated Muse Arts, A-R-T-S. Okay. Um, and, but the most active are Facebook and Instagram. Twitter's okay. not, Twitter not so much. Okay. And if but our website is liberatedmuse.com. Okay. Is that where they would find you if we wanted to book you for a performance? Mm -hmm. Liberatedmuse.com. Um, all right, ladies, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to go here and uh, we will end the recording. <laughs> All right. Uh...